Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. So today's video we're going to be taking a look at the new beta rule Bolter Discipline which has been released on the Warhammer community page and is going to be fully released in February's White Dwarf. Now I'm sure many of you have already seen uh, this release and are pretty excited but I thought I'd, I'd go through it and I'd also thought I would explain it now the reason I'm doing this is because I've seen a lot of people get this rule wrong. Uh, and then of course we're going to take a look at what units we think this is going to be good on. So basically the Bolter rule, it's a new, it's a new, uh, new rule for Adeptus Astartes and Heretic Astartes. And the purpose of this rule is to give Marines a boost. That's the purpose of it. I think in some areas it's been quite successful. I think in others, it's kind of missed the mark a little bit. So let's take a look. Uh, essentially, guys, I'll read the rule out and then I'll explain what that means. So all Adeptus Astartes and Heretic Astartes models gain this ability. Instead of following the normal rules for rapid fire weapons, rapid fire bolt weapons used by models with this ability make double the number of attacks if any of the following apply. The firing model's target is within half the weapon's maximum range. The firing model remains stationary during its previous movement phase. The firing model is a Terminator, Biker, Centurion or Vehicle. Okay, and then it goes on to say for the purpose of the ability of rapid fire bolt weapon is any weapon with rapid fire type whose profile includes the word bolt, e.g. bolt gun, bolt rifle, storm bolt, a combo bolt, a hurricane bolt, a inferno bolt gun, blah 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 blah. So, let's take a look at this. So the first, so the, of the three conditions, they don't stack. Okay, so I see a few people were making the mistake of, oh, well, if I'm in half range and I've stayed still, do I get four shots? No. At no point does this let you get more than the weapon's profile's shots. So what that means is if you are rapid fire one, then at no point are you going to get more than two shots. If you are rapid fire two, like a storm bolter, at no point are you going to get more than four shots. I saw some people thinking that you're getting eight shots from a storm bolter, four shots from a bolter. No, it's not that good. So the first, it's it's if any of they of them apply, not if if each one of these applies, get more shots. Okay, it's any. That's the key. So the first point, the fire model's target is in half of the weapon's maximum range. That's the standard rapid fire rule. If you're in half range, you get double shots. Okay, that's the standard part. So that first one is just normal, business as usual. The second one is if you remain stationary. So imagine you have a squad of tactical marines who are 24 inches or you know, between 24 and 13 inches away from the, the unit you want to shoot at. If they have stayed still, then they get to use their rapid fire rule and get two shots each with their bolt guns. If they have moved then they st and they are st over 12 inches away, over half range, then you would only get the one shot as per usual. Okay? Now if you are a model that is a Terminator, a biker, a Centurion or a vehicle, you always get to fire your double shots. If you are, for example, a Space Marine biker who has twin bolt gun then it does not matter if you are at your maximum range or you are one inch away from your opponent. At all times, you will be getting your double shots from the rapid fire rule, which means at all times you will be getting four shots. Say if you are a Terminator, you have a Storm Bolter, you now no longer need to deep strike within 12 inches to get your four shots from your Storm Bolter. Because you are a Terminator, you can deep strike your maximum range away and you will still get your four shots from your Storm Bolter. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. You're never going to get eight shots. You're never going to get uh, four shots with your, you know, with your eight shots with your storm bolt or four shots with your bolt You're just going to get your normal amount of shots, but now range is a lot less of a factor. Okay, so hopefully that's cleared all that up for everyone. Now, I've already been on the receiving end of this. This rule came out. I arranged a game. And admittedly, I was using uh, an experimental army. I was trying a sort of pure science list. Uh, but, uh, so I was using this, I wasn't very familiar with it. I was playing as a opponent who was very familiar with his list. 
and I was facing against a Dark Angels biker army, and I would say this Bolter rule was insane. It was very, very powerful. Straight away, there were some clear winners. Straight away. Now, um, we're going to go through, basically, who I think are the big winners, and who I think are... You know, this rule doesn't it gives them a little boost but doesn't really boost them as much as they should do. Um The biggest winner of this new rule is Death Watch. Without a shadow of a doubt. Death Watch were already a strong army. They were a bit of a submarine army. People did, people who played them knew they were strong, but people didn't really come across them very often because they were a bit of a niche army. Now the meta, the tournament players have caught on to Death Watch. Especially with the points changes in chapter approved. Death Watch are now insanely powerful. Because, let me explain. Your stand Death Watch veteran I believe costs about 14 points. It's not very expensive. And each Death Watch, ve each Death Watch veteran can take a Storm Bolt for 2 points and a Storm Shield for 2 points. Which means for 18 points, you have a guy who's always got a 3-up save, who has a Storm Bolter. Now, thank now that was already very good. Uh, but what it encouraged is for the Death Watch to uh, be sort of moving forward behind their Wall of Shields, getting into rapid fire range with the Storm Bolter so they can use their special issue ammunition. Because Death Watch don't fire normal bolt rounds. They have three kinds of bolt rounds they can choose from. They have, uh, I don't know the name off the top of my head, but they have a, they can choose to wound on twos always against infantry and monsters. They have add six inches to their range, my, a, AP minus one. Or they have minus six inches from their range, AP minus two. Which means you're now looking at, guys, a unit of Death Watch, who potentially, if they stay still and use the special issue ammunition that gives them plus six inches to their range AP minus one. You're looking at a squad of ten Death Watch veterans. Now obviously there will be some, like there'll be a Black Shield in there, there'll be a Terminator in there, but let's for the sake of argument say each one's got a Storm Bolter, just for ease of maths. That means at 30 inch range a single squad of Death Watch veterans can put out 40 shots. AP minus one they well, you know, you have a watchmaster, they're re-rolling all wounds. Not all wounds, so they're re-rolling all hits. Uh you can pick your tactics, which means they can re-roll once to wound. And you can use stratagems which let you get plus one to wound. So suddenly your death watch are really, really powerful. Or no, that's against that's that's their take all come around, the plus six inch range, AP minus one. What if the Death Watch are facing against a horde army? Now, the sort of the the, strip, the sort of weakness of the Death Watch with the Storm Bolters was yes, I am going to get within yeah, I am going to get four shots per guy, but I'm going to have to get pretty close to use that. Uh, you know, Orc Hordes, for example, or Talos, uh, you'd get one chance to blast them, and then they're going to get in your face. Not so much anymore. A Death Watch veteran squad with I think it's Hellfire Rounds, which give you two plus to wound. Um, they could easily, from 24 inch range, get 40 shots rerolling all hits, and then if you select troop choices or whatever is your tactic, get reroll ones to wound. So hitting on threes, rerolling everything, wounding on twos, rerolling everything, that's going to start piling the wounds on. So I believe Death Watch are the big winners here. That's just, there are many other things that Death Watch can do with this, but that's the that's a good example. Uh, I think Terminators are obviously did very well here. Terminators of all varieties. Now the ability to... Uh, tactical Terminators have now... I've been saying for a while Tactical Terminators are very good. I use them with my Black Templars all the time. The fact that now I don't need to deep strike them really close to the enemy. I can I can deep strike them to more tactical positions to some cover where they can spray rounds out. T regular Terminators just became fantastic. Grey Knights got a bit of a boost. It's a lot. There's a long way for Grey Knights to go. But the fact that every single Grey Knight model has a storm bolter now means and grey knights suffer with durability and now means grey knights no longer need to deep strike so close to the enemy no grey knight player can really take advantage 
of the fact that his 24 inch range storm bolt is going to be getting four shots now. He can be deep striking on top of buildings, in cover. Basically, Grey Knights now will always be able to deep strike into cover uh, and still get all the shots they need. So they've got a, people are saying, oh, yeah, it gives the Grey Knights the extra shooting they need. I think they're kind of missing an angle there. Yeah, it, do, it does give them extra shooting. Great. But it actually gives them extra durability. For them to be able to deep strike into cover means that all the Grey Knights are now pretty much getting plus one to their save. Which means your regular strike marines got a big boost. Obviously your terminators get a big boost. Your regular strike marines get a big boost. And they were already very valuable in the in the Grey Knight army. So that's good. That's good. Grey Knight's getting a little boost to both their durability and their fire output is great. Now on regular marines, on just Codex of Starties marines, what we're looking at here is an interesting dynamic. You see, in the other two codices that I've mentioned, Grey Knights, Death Watch, their troop choices got a boost. Veterans and Strike Marines, which is good. It's the whole point, I feel, of this rule was to boost. And Dark Angels, of course, it's their, their bikers. Um, the whole point of their... Uh, of the of this rule is kind of meant to boost your basic but you 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 basic marines so obviously dark angels they love their bikes they love their terminators both of those got boosted death watch love their foot veterans those got boosted uh gray knights their stripe marines got boosted then you get to the regular astartes marines and that rule doesn't really apply in fact yes your regular tactical marines now can get two shots at long range raven guard are going to absolutely love that because they can sit back with their mass one to hit 24 inch range and get loads of shots and i've again i saw a raven guard army versus a ultramarine army and the raven guard army just went to town really it showed the difference and the, and it's just it's very interesting so the raven guard are going to enjoy it but like i said it's not really that your regular tactical marines which are going to be boosted by this you're going to have I mean, think about it. Your regular tactical marines getting two shots. Whoop de do. Let's take a look at the other bolt weapons that are in that are in the Codex Statis. Hurricane bolters, for example. So Land Raider Crusaders, they got a boost, but they're already they're still very very expensive. So, but they're they're good. So, but Hurricane bolters are a big win in. The regular code societies but the regular bolt gun not so much so it's, it's weird like yeah you could you could take your regular tactical marines and they're 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 going to be better now but things like centurions got a massive boost centurions come with a hurricane bolt at each that's incredible terminators big boost storm ravens ironclad dreadnoughts so Anything that you can slap a hurricane bolter on essentially became really, really powerful. So don't get me wrong, it is boosting regular tactical marines. But the fact that something like 50 points, roughly, I'm just spitballing here, guys, 50 points, a centurion with double heavy bolter and hurricane bolter is just going to tear through things. Think about a squad of centurions with... Uh, the new Crimson Fist attachment. Now, we already said that was fantastic and that you can add Bolter Drill and the Crimson Fist uh, formation and your Centurions. I think someone's done the maths and with all these things stacked up, you can get something like on a full squad of Centurions, something like 20 mortal wounds if you do your re-rolls on various things. So, that's incredible. That's really, really incredible. Now, so yeah, so whilst I feel like Whilst I feel like a lot of units got a big boost, I feel like this rule, and obviously Primaris, Incessors, Bolt Rifles, fantastic, 30 inch range Bolt Rifles, two shots, yeah, goes without saying. But whilst I feel like a lot of units got a big boost, the main problem wasn't actually addressed, which is regular Marines are still not, you know, they're still good, and they've had a boost, but they're still, and I, I'm not saying regular moves are shit. I know there's this pervasive thing on the internet. Oh, regular moves are shit. I don't believe them. I'm the guy that runs 100 regular marines about Black Tide, and they're great. Um, but they, 
But the thing that they were trying to boost, which is your standard tactical marine, got a boost. But then everything else got boosted more. So if you think about it, veterans, they're, they're not like a regular tactical marine. They've got storm bolters. That applies to stern guard veterans as well. Bikers, they're not regular marines. You know, strike squads, they've got storm bolters. Basically what I'm saying is, your regular marine got better. We still, because everything else got better, it's still one of those things. That, why would I want to choose this guy over an elite unit? Put just bear that in mind. So, anyway, this video is already fifty minutes long. I'm going to quickly touch upon the heretic side of things. Now, chaos doesn't have as much. They don't have as much bolt weaponry as regular marines in their competitive armies so you know cultist bombs for example they don't use bolters the big winners here are thousand suns okay thousand suns because now their rubric marines can get two shots each at 24 inch range with strength 4 ap minus 2 bolt weaponry that's very powerful scab occult terminators which are, you know, relatively cheap. I mean, they come in Tartarus power armor as well, so uh, Terminator armor. So they've got four shots with their combi bolters. So they've got four shots, um, strength four, AP minus two. That's really good. So Thousand Suns, they're expensive now. They've always been very expensive, Thousand Suns. But now they have the firepower to back up their price. And don't forget, Thousand Suns are already hard as nails. Every, I think every squad has a five plus save. Your all is dust affects that, so you can have four plus uh, invun save. Uh, every unit, obviously, you know you've got three plus um, save or two plus save. So yeah, I think this is a big win for Thousand Suns because a lot of people basically saw the Codex Thousand Suns as Codex Zangor bomb, and now Codex Thousand Suns is Codex fucking Thousand Suns Rubik Marines, which is great. Regular Codex Asta uh, Heretic Astartes. Again, I mean, I might be a little ignorant here. I'm not as familiar with Kirk Society, so apologies if I get this wrong. But I'm trying to think about where you can really spam your bolt weaponry. And you don't get hurricane bolters in your in your Heretic Society, in your Chaos Space Marines. You don't. Um, they use more things like auto cannons, things like that. So, just on the top of my head, I'm thinking... Obviously, your Chaos Terminators got better, but Chaos Terminators with Combi Plasma were already the standard. So, not sure what's going on there. Um, noise Marines didn't get any better because they don't have bolters. They have sonic weapons. In fact, Noise Marines sort of got a bit of a hit, inadvertently. Yeah, it's kind of your basic... It's kind of boosted. It's been. I feel like this beta bolter rule in the Codex Heretic of Starties, Codex Chaos Space Marines, has boosted the right area, which was your basic Chaos Marine. Because uh, why would you take him over a, a, a cultist? Well, now the reason you take them is because they're fucking hard as nails, and they've got the DACA to back that up. That's why you take them. I mean, I've been thinking of running a list for a while now, my Iron Tide. What is it with me and bloody space, you know, running horde armies? But anyway, the Iron Tide, which would essentially be a hundred Chaos Space Marines, which are fearless with some rerolls. So you'd have a Baden and big three, four big squads of Care Space Marines, and then you'd have an Iron Warriors Lord with three or four big squads of Care Space. It'd look like a hundred regular Care Space Marines, because you can take them in blocks of twenty. Uh, I was thinking of taking them blocks of fifteen, because then you can you can get a decent, and you can take two plasma weapons and a combi plasma in there. So you can take a lot of plasma in your in your Care Space Marine squads. So I feel like that would be the way to run it. Hordes of regular Mar of 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 chaos space marines. Um, obviously, your rhinos now double rhino. This is for both for both sides. D uh, rhino with double bolt, uh, storm bolter, combi bolter. That's eight shots from a rhino at long range. Now that's pretty good. Um, yeah, but it's, it's storm ravens obviously uh, 
are great now. They, I mean, they're all, Storm Ravens are already fantastic. But yeah, Heretic Astartes, they... They um, they don't they don't get boosted by this as much as, as regular Astartes. The only wit losers I would say is your uh, well not losers is Death Guard used to, uh, Codex Death Guard they have a rule which gives them eighteen inch rapid fire range so they don't really benefit from this quite as much, um, but I guess the thing is they can still have eighteen inch range for their plasma gun so it still works okay. Yeah, but Death Guard don't really benefit from this as much. They they don't really they don't, they don't, just don't really care for it. Um, so there you go, guys. That's the Bolter rule. Uh, interesting. I'm sure there's some things that I've missed, but as you can see, it does boost. I feel Loyalist Marines more than Chaos Marines, but Chaos Marines were already probably stronger than Loyalist Marines, and it does boost the one thing in the Chaos Space Marine codes which no one was taking, which was care space marines which is kind of sad so there you go guys what do you think if i miss anything out please let me know and of course i'll see you guys next time